Hi, Randy and Leslie here from the Family Reformation Project. Thanks for joining us. Yeah. Today we're going to take on the question, what is the best way to identify strongholds that have been passed down generationally? You, Randy, you want to take that? Sure. So, wow, great question, because this is the, the, the great unknown that affects us only always. <laughs> You know, so we got to lay a little groundwork here. So what is a stronghold, first of all? You know, the scripture talks about uh, that the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds to every thought or idea that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. Well, what does that mean? It means that really any thinking or influence that is in disagreement with God and can have influence over us. And when it does, it can affect the choices we make and the results in our life. So a stronghold is like a well-worn path through a grass field. If, you, if you're walking in a grass field, the first few times, you know, you knock over the grass, the next few, it gets more knocked down. But if you do that over and over and over, it becomes a dirt path that's well-worn through that. We actually have that in our brains too, right? The physiology of our brains, neural pathways form when we choose to think certain ways. And so, you know, a stronghold may be a fear or of lust or perversion or uh, of poverty. control, poverty, witchcraft. There's really 12 strong men in the Bible, right? Different schemes that the enemy uses and there's the spirits have influence. So the influence is the proclivity, the proclivity to think in a way that disagrees with God. So, for example, in my identity, if I believe and I choose to believe that my identity and my value is based on how I perform, am I successful? Am I attractive? Am I smart? Do I make a lot of money? What do other people think about me? Well, believe it or not, a lot of people choose knowingly or unknowingly to think that's where their identity and their value comes from. The more a person does that, the more ingrained that thinking is, and it becomes a stronghold. In other words, it moves from, I'm choosing to think this way, to all of a sudden, it has me. No longer do I have it, it has me. And I give in to that way of thinking, whether it's toward alcohol or addiction or abuse or sexual, I, it, all of a sudden, it moves from this this uh, outward idea to an inward characteristic, and I begin living out of that way of thinking. Or so that's what a stronghold is. And generationally speaking, that those kinds of behaviors that are are really ingrained actually get into our DNA. There's really fascinating mm -hmm. research on that. But Randy talks about in the prologue of the book about two families, and one of the families is called the Jukes. It's a historical account of a family, and the lineage is they're they're criminals, they're liars, beggars, beggars. cheaters. Mm -hmm. um, they they uh, the entire family line as they go back generationally, early death. There's it's, it's really remarkable based on those, those um, behaviors that are besetting and go back a few generations. So in the book, there's an exercise that goes into your family history. And it, it is a way to go back and really look at what are the character mm -hmm. traits, positive and negative, yeah. but we're looking specifically for strongholds in your family line. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so good. So there's always a reason why, and you know, a tree by its fruit. That's what the scripture says. So if in our family lines, and this isn't to make anybody bad or wrong, it just is what it is. We have to know if in our family line, there's all kinds of divorce, or there's all kinds of addiction. We know physically when we go to the doctor, we fill out the forms and there's, you know, in your family line, your genetic history, there's this you know, vulnerability to cancer or to kidney disease or whatever. And, and that's the way it is spiritually too. So when these, uh, you know, when lust or perversion or you know, fear or any of these strongholds are operating in our generational lines, that gets into their DNA, as Leslie said. And then when they procreate, the next generation comes pre-programmed with these strongholds. And at some point, the opportunity is there always, but at some point somebody says, you know what, I'm tired of this in my, in me or my life or my family, and I'm going to do something about it. Mm -hmm. And there's inner healing tools and tools to deal with strongholds in the workbook. 
I mean, the basic framework for healing is what? Do you want to cover that one? You know, the, when, it, when, you, when it's, I, I've identified a lie and I see that in my life that, you know, that I am afraid of what people think about me. I'm operating by the fear of the man. How do I get free from that? Yeah, it, it, it very simply stated, you choose to think a different way, right? There's tools around personal investigator that I like to, um, I like to, it's our emotions. I like to describe our emotions as, as indicator lights on a dashboard. And contrary to what a lot of people believe, it is our thinking that drives our emotions, not mm -hmm. the other way around. Mm -hmm. So when you can identify your emotions and then go through the process of identifying your thinking and how it's how it's benefiting you and how it's costing you, then you can choose to actually think a different way. Mm -hmm. The neuroscience around this is fascinating. You legitimately, literally can carve new, new neural pathways in your brain um, and, and change and break off those generational strongholds yeah. by choosing to think and then conversely out of our heart. So are we live and behave in a different way and it will change the trajectory of your genetic family line. There's lots of evidence to support this, yeah. by the way. So good. And, and I'll say this real quick. So if I'm if I have this stronghold of the fear of man, I'm, I have an unhealthy attachment to what other people think about me and I'm always aware, then here's the process. I recognize it as a lie. I take responsibility that I've been choosing to agree with that. And I shut off the flow of that way of thinking, or I put up a, a roadblock sign to that path that's well-worn. I say, you're not. there's no more of that thinking uh, of fear of man gonna traffic on this pathway anymore. I disagree with it and I repent. That's what the scripture says, I change my thinking and I choose to agree with God that um, that the fear of man is a snare, and that the you know the fear of God is the starting of wisdom, and the hatred of evil. And I, I begin to think God's way about my value, and I open the flow. I, I put up you know free flowing on this traffic uh, on this pathway. You're going to think like God thinks, and by doing that and choosing to identify repent and and choose a new way of thinking that agrees with God, we get free. We stop those strongholds. But if you want to know what's present, just look around, do a little research about your own life, your parents, your grandparents, or ask for some stories and just, you know, what was going on in their life? What was the good, the bad, and the ugly? And you'll notice certain patterns, patterns and themes and here's the thing, if we can get cleaned, get those strongholds taken down and get them taken down in our children before they procreate, think of that freedom that their generations, right? Our generations will have to operate yeah. free in freedom as they're, as they're healed and delivered. All of these um, exercises and information is in the Family Reformation Project in Randy's book, the workbook and the e-course. So uh, log on to thefamilyreformationproject.com and learn more. Thanks for joining us. Good job. That was a good one, actually, in yeah. a short period.